Don't have a college scholarship offer and you're heading into your senior year? Today we're going to talk about how you can get yours on the Gridiron Stud Show. Hey, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Recruiting advice for everyone. It's the Gridiron Stud Show. Aside from championships, college scholarship offers is what every high school football player is chasing. And today we're going to talk about how you as a senior can get yours if you have it. We'll also talk about if you do have scholarship offers, but you don't have them from the school that you want them from, some of the things that you can do to go about getting that school's attention. Doesn't necessarily mean that they'll end up offering you a scholarship, but we're going to give you a few tips on how you can get their attention and possibly get yourself on the way to getting a college scholarship offer. But like I said, you're heading into your senior year and it's starting to come into crunch time. Season's just beginning. You're trying to get yourself some attention and get the ball rolling on your recruiting. First thing I want to tell you is this. If, you're, if your entire focus is on the big schools, the power five schools, I'm telling you, now is the time for you to shift your focus. Doesn't mean you give up on that dream, but now we're talking about strategy because we're heading into the senior year and it's time to really start getting real and put ourselves in position for our ultimate goal, which is to get a college football scholarship. So the first thing I'm gonna tell you is, if all you've been thinking about are the big time schools, the power five schools, the schools that play in the marquee matchups on ABC on Sunday or Saturday afternoon, then it's time for you to shift your focus. What you need to do now is start moving towards the schools where you have the chance to get an offer. And that would be any of the schools that have been sending you letters or have contacted you via social media or email or the schools that have actually come out and offered you or uh, asked you to come to their camps in the summertime or the coaches have been in any kind of communication with you. It's time for you to turn your focus to those schools, open up the lines of communication, and not only that, stay in constant communication with those schools and with those coaches because again, the ultimate goal right now is for you to secure a scholarship. Because you don't wanna be sitting in this crowd when signing day comes and everyone's in the big gym. You wanna be sitting on stage and you wanna sign your college scholarship offer in front of everyone. Those large schools may not be recruiting you for a number of reasons. One could be exposure. They just have not been able to see you. They don't recruit your area that hard or they don't recruit your school. So it gets a little difficult now because you don't have summer camps that you can go to and grab the attention of that school. You can't go directly on their campus right now because you're in the middle of the season, so you don't have that opportunity. The only thing you can do right now is play to the best of your ability. And even in that case, it may not be enough because again, they may not recruit your area or your school. So again, that's not something you can really focus on right now. The focus should be back on you playing to the best of your ability. Another reason why they may not be recruiting you is because at this time, they just think there's some other guys that they are going after right now that they may feel, in their opinion, is better than you. And the, other, and the final reason may be they just don't think that you're a guy that's going to fit their scheme. That might sound harsh, but we're at the point now where we have to confront reality. And I'll always say this, having a good self-awareness in recruiting is the biggest asset that you could have in getting yourself continued on to college and playing college football. Now you can force your way into one of those schools that you ultimately really, really want to go to that's not currently recruiting you, but here's the problem with that. You're gonna spend a tremendous amount of time and energy pursuing those schools and it may not indeed be fruitful for you. And in the process, you may have cut yourself off from some of the schools that were really interested in you that could have offered you a college football scholarship to continue your ability to play college football. Now, you can indeed be successful in forcing your way into one of those schools. You may end up walking on, or you may get one of the very last scholarships that they have to offer. Now, that's gonna seem good to you in the beginning, but I'm gonna tell you, if you're not really what that school wants, they're gonna go recruit over you next year. And what do I mean by that? That means they're gonna go out and recruit the kind of guys that they really, really want. And those guys are gonna come in and most likely have more opportunities than you to move up the depth chart or even grab a starting position on the team. You know that's gonna bring you a tremendous amount of frustration. And then now you're in the transfer portal and you're trying to move on to another school. And I'm here to tell you, that's not a very easy process. So let's try and avoid that by following some of these steps. And coming up, I'm gonna tell you what I think is the best way for you to reach out to a coach. Is it email or is it Twitter? Email or Twitter, I'm gonna answer that question for you coming up. But before we do that, if you fall into the category that I'm talking about, 
then here's what you need to do. It's time for you to shift your focus. If your primary focus in recruiting has been the Power Five schools, Clemson, Alabama, Texas, those types, then it's time for you to now shift your focus to schools in the Group of Five conference. And that's Mountain West, that's, a bit, that's the MAC conference, that's the AAC. They're very, very good schools in those conferences and they play very, very good football. If, the not, if some of the schools you've been looking for are in those group of five conferences and you've not received any interest from them, then it may be time for you to start looking into uh, 1AA, which is also known as FCS, or maybe even Division II. As I said, it's, it's your senior year and it's crunch time. So now it's time for you to start opening up a dialogue with schools that would be interested in you. So that's what it's time for you to do. So go find those schools, start looking at them. And if they've already contacted you, it's time for you to open up those lines of communication and start developing a relationship with those coaches that are reaching out to you from those schools. Go ahead and answer them back in any form of communication that they've reached out to you. If they've sent you a questionnaire, you certainly need to send that back. Hopefully you've done that already because as I said, you're heading into your senior year and things are going to really start to move fast. Now to answer the question that I told you guys about, what do I think is better in terms of email or Twitter to reach out to a coach? I would have to go with Twitter because coaches more and more now as we move forward in the whole social media world are on social media, more of them are on Twitter, and it's a little bit easier to reach out to them through direct messaging. Here's a problem, the coach has to also be following you for you to send them that direct message. So if they're not, I would go ahead and send them a message asking them to follow you back, or you may wanna tag them in one of your highlight video tweets. You may wanna do that, I wouldn't do it too much, but ask for a simple follow back. If they do follow you back, then I would go the Twitter route. You also wanna do email. So I'm not telling you Twitter and that's all that you do. I do think that Twitter is a little better than email in getting to the coach, but definitely use both. So use Twitter, try to reach out to a coach, sending your highlight video, and then also reach out to him via email. Another great thing for you is download the Gridiron Studs app. Go on there, create your profile, it allows you to put in all of your academic and athletic information, everything that the coach needs to recruit you. And please don't forget to add your highlight video. Adding images as well, high quality images, is also a great tool for you. College football coaches are using the Gridiron Studs app to go find players all across the country. It's just another avenue for you to use where college coaches can go and find you. But again, be persistent, but don't go overboard with it. So. Ever so often, you need to send that highlight video, send it by email, try to send it to a coach via the direct messaging on Twitter. The other thing you need to do is, after three games in your season, if you've played well, you need to put yourself together a three-game highlight video. It doesn't, I mean, look, if you can put together a minute of highlights that look good, that displays and shows what you are, what kind of player you are, and how you can help a college football program, go ahead and make that three game highlight. If you, know, if you need another game to do it, then make it a four game highlight. Then you'll need to update that again with a mid season highlight. And then of course, when your season's over, you're gonna need your full season highlights. But don't forget that important part, make that three game highlight, do the mid year highlights and get those things out. Keep the coaches updated on the fresh things that you've been doing out on the high school football field. One other note on the Gridiron Studs app, I'm gonna include the link to do, download the Gridiron Studs app in the description in this video, so make sure to check that out. And again, if you're watching this video, you're definitely, and you're a high school football player looking to get a college football scholarship, you're definitely gonna need to hit that link and download it. We have it available for both iPhone as well as Android. However, I do wanna to continue to stress this. I know you're chasing college football offers, but the number one thing you need to be doing right now if you're into your season, that is on focusing on playing well and helping your team win games. College football teams wanna win games. And what better way for them to try and project you on their college football team than actually seeing you doing things that's helping your team win games? Because that's what they need to do at their level. So go about trying to be the best player that you can be and help your team win as much as possible. If that means going on special teams, on extra special teams here or there, then you need to go ahead and do that. Anytime you can get yourself on that field and do something spectacular to help your team win, that only bolsters your resume when you're trying to reach out to a college football team or program 
and tell them that you are of quality or you're someone that they might want to recruit. So I'm telling you right now, your focus needs to be on being the best player that you can be going out there making plays every Friday and college football scholarship offers tend to fall in place. However, you do need to be diligent while you're out there making those plays, compile the highlights and get them out to the coaches via email, via Twitter. If you, if you, if you're on Facebook, not many of you are, but if you are on Facebook and you have uh, college football coaches as friends, go ahead and reach out to them there. Any avenue that you can use to get your information out to those college football coaches is going to be your friend right now because you are a senior and it's crunch time. Like I said, you need to get your info you need to get your exposure right now. And the only way for you to really do that without the benefit of camps is to play well put your highlight video together and go ahead and contact coaches. So let's say we're doing all these things, we're playing well, we put the highlight video together and we're sending it out to coaches and still you're not getting any traction. Let's prepare for the worst case scenario. You're not getting any information or any contact from coaches and you're not getting the offers and it's starting to come down to that time. You still have some things available to you and I want you to be able to take a look at it. If you, and now which way you go on that really depends on what your situation is. If you have the measurables, uh, let's say you're a six foot four defensive end or you're a 5'11", six foot cornerback, you guys know what the measurables are. And if you don't, it's very easy for you to find out. Go over to 247 or Rivals and go looking through the top 10 list or the top 100 list at your position. Look at the height and weight of those guys um, and, and also the speed of those guys and you will know where you stack up. If you're in that area, if you're very, very close to it, then my advice to you is this, you may be able to go walk on at one of those schools. But I'm here to tell you, walk on life is very, very difficult. Scholarship players are gonna be treated differently from walk on players. And if you are the big time player at your high school football team, or you're a really good player and you're used to being treated a certain way, this is gonna be a little bit of a shock to your system. So you're gonna to have to be mentally prepared if you're trying to walk on at a school for being in a position where you get treated differently. Uh, perhaps you think it's not fair. Whatever the case may be, this is how it is. There are players that they've paid to get there and then there are players like you who have paid to come there and you're gonna be treated differently. So walk on life is not the greatest um, for you and you're gonna to have to just be able to deal with that mental part of it. You're gonna to have to deal with the part of actually, you may have a situation where you're playing well and doing great things and doing everything that you're asked and you still don't get offered a scholarship. So you're, if you're gonna walk on, just be mentally prepared for that part of it. The next thing that you have available to you is going the junior college route. You could do that if you're a player that has all the measurables, height and weight. It might be a little bit of an easier path for you in terms of earning scholarships because if you go to the right junior college, you're gonna, you know, the coaches are gonna come in there from the colleges and they're gonna have a chance to see you, maybe more so than they did when you were in college. Also, um, at the junior college, it gives you a chance to develop more. Perhaps you were new to the game of football, or maybe you weren't coached as well, or there's some things that were missing to your game and they needed to be touched up. You can do that if you go to junior college because it gives you a little extra time to develop your skills, maybe get bigger, get in a weight program, or just become an overall better football player that's more attractive to the college programs that will now see you as this improved player. When you go to junior college route, if you are qualified in terms of having a test score as well as a GPA, you can leave after one year if you go there and you play well and you're able to accumulate great film and, and up your game and colleges are able to see you. If you don't have a score and you're not a qualifier, then you're gonna to need to stay there for two years. That's two more years for you to get better, two more years for you to improve yourself academically and be more of what I would say an asset to a college football program when they come around looking for guys that want to play. However, beware when you're going to junior college route because it can be a little bit of a tougher road for you. Sometimes the living conditions at a junior college aren't the greatest. You may have to go out of your area to go to that junior college and that's going to be a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of an adjustment for you. Also, sometimes players at a junior college aren't always that serious about their college football career, so that's going to be an adjustment for you. If you look at it as a bit of a business trip, you're there, you're focused, you got a one-track mind, let me handle my academics, let me handle my athletics, then you're going to be able to do what it is you need to do at your junior college. But just be mindful of that, that those things do exist. Not going to be the best living conditions at some of the junior colleges. I'm not saying all, 
but you may find yourself in that situation, you're gonna have to be mentally tough to get through that. And then also the environment may not always be the best, because as I said, not everyone at a junior college is focused on football. Some of them have other ideas and uh, they bring some bad habits with them. And you're just gonna have to overcome that. But if you keep a business mind about it and you keep focused with your academics and your athletics, then you can make yourself through there. I just wanted you to be aware of that. If you're not a qualifier or you're having problems academically, you can also go the route of the prep school. Now, I'm not an expert per se on the prep school, so I would tell you, get on Google, do a little bit of research, or reach out to people that may in fact have a little bit more information on prep schools, uh, the best ones to go to and exactly how they work, but it is an option that is available to you. Overall, what I'm trying to tell you is that you're trying to extend your college football career. Uh, and you're trying to play football for as long as you can. So don't get yourself bummed out if your top schools are not recruiting you. That's not the only place that you can play college football, and that's not the only place that can provide you with a strong and very good experience. There are a ton of other schools that play college football that are available to you, and you should make use of all of those if you, in fact, really do love playing football. If it's all about just trying to dress up in the colors of your favorite school, then you can go walk on. I'm just telling you, finding the playing time or finding yourself a scholarship to those schools is gonna be very, very difficult if you have that singular focus on those couple of schools and they're not, in fact, recruiting you and have shown very little interest to this point. But I'm gonna stress this to you again, if you're trying to make it to your ultimate goal, if you're trying to have a good college football experience, or if you have hopes of playing in the NFL one day, the best thing and the trick for you is to try and play football for as long as possible. So make use of all these avenues. The path to the NFL is not always straight. There are a number of guys who have gone the circular route. Steve Smith comes to mind. Steve Smith did not go to a college football, did not play to, uh, at college football right away. He had to go the junior college route. And he went to a sm smaller junior college out in California, then ended up going to Utah, had a pretty solid career there, ended up going to the NFL and was a wide receiver for the Carolina Panthers and the Baltimore Ravens for a very, very long time and someone who may end up in the NFL's Hall of Fame. So the path is not always straight. The trick is to continue playing, have good self-awareness and try to develop and get better and better as, uh, as you move up the ladder. It doesn't matter where you go to do that. As long as they're playing and you have an opportunity, you should seek that out and continue to pursue it. So let's recap. If the schools that you're most interested in have not shown any interest in you, it's time for us to first shift our focus. Start looking at and start opening up the lines of communication with schools that have shown interest in you or schools that you feel very strongly at this point in your senior year that may be interested in offering you a college football scholarship. It's time to be real. We're coming down to crunch time and you don't want to be left out on signing day when everyone is signing for their college football scholarship offers. Number two is you have to continue to play well on the football field. If you're not playing well on the football field, then everything we're discussing is for naught. Because if you're not showing them that you can dominate and play well at the high school level, it's not going to look good for them in terms of um, thinking you're going to be able to provide them with what they need to win college football games. So play well in your games and help your team win games. The next thing is Get your information out. You need exposure, and sometimes you've got to go bring the exposure to you. So reach out to coaches on email, on Twitter, and definitely download the Gridiron Studs app, and build a profile, add your highlight video there where coaches can come on and see you and see what you've been doing and how, in fact, you can help them in the college football program. Then finally, if you do all those things and it's still not working out for you, all is not lost. You have some areas and you have some avenues that are available to you. You can walk on, but again, that's tough because walk-ons are treated different than scholarship players when you walk on at a school, but it is an avenue that's available to you. You can go the JUCO route if you need a little bit more time, A, for exposure, or B, to improve certain areas of your game that may make you a better fit or more attractive to college football teams. So you can go the JUCO route. And if grades are a problem, you can go to prep school, do a little research on prep schools in your area or some of the best prep schools that are available to you in the country. And you can go that route there if you need a little bit of help with your academics. Maybe you fell behind in high school or you don't, you're not quite up to speed and you're not gonna be a qualifier. You can search for prep schools and there've been a number of players that have been able to enter college football going the prep school route. So you may wanna be able to do that. 
So I certainly hope this video has helped you. Now you're heading into your senior year and things are gonna start moving really, really fast and you're probably getting yourself into panic mode. Just follow these steps right here, follow them diligently, and again, have self-awareness and you can start on your way to getting the college scholarship offers to continue your football career. Hey, if you like this video, please like it, also share it, and then more important, subscribe and hit the bell so that you will be notified every time I release a new college football recruiting video or any tips on playing high school football and improving your game. So subscribe, hit the bell, and, and again, if you're a high school football player and you're looking for a college football scholarship, Go ahead and download the Gridiron Studs recruiting app. I'm going to have the link to uh, download the Gridiron Studs app, whether it's an Android or an iPhone, right here in the description. Click on that link, download the Gridiron Studs app, create a profile, add your highlight video, and be seen by college football coaches. So thank you for watching. And until next time, thanks for watching the Gridiron Studs show.